Hello guys, so welcome back to my channel first of all and if you're new here, hi I'm Hannah and thank you for joining me. We are back with another sewing video, so this weekend my goal is to make one of those cropped corsets that are very much in fashion at the moment. I know I'm all about the versatile like fashion pieces in my wardrobe and making things that are classic enough to last for years, but this trend I think if it's done right it could be worn throughout the years. Um, especially the fact that I'm doing it in quite a plain fabric and a crop top with a pair of jeans is always going to be a staple in my wardrobe. So we're very excited to be making this. The pattern I'm going to be going off is just a Butterick um, standard corset pattern. So I am going to be using like um, A as my um, pattern pieces but I'm going to be adjusting the height to make it a crop. Um, and then the fabric we're going to make it out of is this grey linen fabric, exactly the same as I used for my trousers, which would have been last week's video. Uh, so yeah, I think, one, it will go really lovely with all different types of denim, so the blue denim, black denim, whatever I want to wear with, it should go really nicely with. Um, and I think it will make it quite a classic piece rather than having any funky patterns which would make it slightly more like trend piece wise and then other than that I have got the boning for it I got um, cotton cased boning so it should just be able to get sewn straight on um, and I think I needed about 3 metres of it and I got like 5 just to make sure I want to make sure that I've got a lot of support in there so that I don't have to wear a bra. And then the only things that I've not got yet, but hopefully I'll be able to get in town tomorrow, are uh, I need some eyelets and the tool to do eyelets with. That's something I've never done before. So I'm hoping I can pick them up in town. I should be able to. I've seen them in a couple of shops before. Um, and then I also need some ribbon or some cord to do the crisscrossy back lace up a bit. So that's what we're aiming to make. I'm going to go and measure myself up and then start cutting the pattern out. So before measuring myself up, my initial thoughts are I'll probably cut it out to a size 12, which should be very, very similar measurements to what I've got, but maybe on the slightly smaller side. Because it's a corset and because you want the lace up to be able to pull you in and cinch you in, um, you don't want to make it bigger than your size, you definitely want to go on the true to size or smaller size than you actually are, um, so that the lace up can do all the work for you and can give you the pull in that you're after. So I'll probably go for a size 12 and then not have to alter the pattern between two sizes if my bust say a size 14 and my waist is at like a size 12. I don't need to cut the pattern between the two sizes because um, the lace up should do it all for me. So that's the plan. I'm also going to measure from say the centre of my shoulder to the height on my body where I want the corset to end and sit. Um, so I'm going to have a look at that and see, especially with, I've got high waisted jeans on right now, so I'll be able to adjust to um, see exactly where I want it to sit and fall and have that measurement so that when I do cut the pattern I can see where where it wants to get cut off. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm going to start doing and I'll probably catch up with you tomorrow after I've done all of that because today we are going to go to my parents' house because it's my sister's prom. So there'll be a video at some point showing the final reveal of her prom dress which I made earlier on in the year. Um, and so yeah, that's really exciting. So I'll speak to you all later. Good morning guys, so I'm back. It's now Saturday and I thought I'd show you where we've got to and sort of talk through my thoughts on how I'm going to alter this. So I measured myself up yesterday and I actually was bang on the measurements on the bust and the waist for the size 12. So I cut out all the pattern pieces to the size 12 and then I've ironed them and ironed the fabric. I've also had a look and decided to use a lining fabric as well. Um, so I'll show you what I'm using, but it's just a plain white lining fabric, which should help, one, make it less see-through, and two, it should help with the structure and the amount of support that the garment gives. 
we want to make something cropped so on these pattern pieces they show where the waistline is however being five foot nine um, that will need adjusting they don't give a marking or anything for where the shoulder will be so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up the front pattern piece to me remembering to allow for seam allowances and decide how much from the waist that I want to add because um, I don't want to just leave it as it is because obviously the pattern piece allows for hips as well so however much I could leave it how it is and then just adjust the height we'd then come out where actually it's going to sit at my smallest part so it does want to be sort of where it cinches in we've also got the thing to consider about this pattern currently comes down at the front so it currently has this shape at the front which I was thinking about keeping um, but to keep that then I need to keep the bottom line of all these pattern pieces so it's quite complicated I'm going to do a little bit of thinking and then come back to you once I've come up with a decision but the most important thing when altering a pattern is to make sure you're consistent for all the pattern pieces I have made an executive decision on how I'm going to alter this so what I have done is I have cut where it said to lengthen or shorten each pattern piece and shortened it by one inch and then I have straightened this probably isn't the best piece to show you because it's already pretty straight um, this piece wasn't so I have straightened off where it would have flared out so the bottom line isn't going to match up exactly as it is but I've made sure that it's long enough that when I put all the pattern pieces together I can try it on and adjust the bottom line and the length accordingly so it shouldn't be far off lengthwise where it is but it will probably be able to go a little bit shorter um, as I do the bottom line we're um, all cut out and ready to start on the sewing now so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take each individual piece and do some stay stitching around the entire outside or perimeter of the section so this is because on a more rigid fabric if you pull it in line with the grain it's not going to move very much but as soon as you start adding curves or cutting curves or diagonals on the fabric it will have quite a lot of stretch to it so stay stitching just means that it will stabilize the edges of your piece and stop it from stretching out of place so I'm going to do that with all of the pieces like front and lining pieces and then after that I'm going to start constructing it and putting them all together as I usually do I'll sort of teach you um, the skills and take you through the steps but I won't tell you like this piece gets connected to this piece etc because that's what the pattern is for so I'm going to make a start also um, stay stitching I'll do that on the machine and I'll just do it on the longest straight stitch setting okay so a quick little update I have stay stitched around the edge of all of the pieces for the outer fabric of the corset and I have stitched the panels together so this is what we are dealing with also um, after altering the pattern the bottom line actually looks pretty good things tend to line up quite well um, so as I sort of go along I'll see about the height I think it will want to be made a little bit shorter um, but that's actually worked quite well and I think that's all that I'll get a chance to do today because I'm about to go out to the hairdressers but I'll pick up with you again tomorrow good morning guys so I am back and it's now Sunday and I've got a lot left to do on this corset but I'm determined to get it finished today so fingers crossed we can get that done um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same with the lining as what I did with the outside of the corset yesterday so I'm going to go around each piece and stay stitch them for stability and then join all the panels together. I've also had a slight change of heart about how I'm going to construct it. So the pattern says to construct it with binding around all the edges. However, because it's for a fashion piece, I'm thinking that clean lines would look a lot nicer. And I've got the I've got the length there to do a normal seam, so sort of right sides together, seam round it and then turn it the right way out. I think I've got enough space and fabric there and I think it would look a lot smarter for a fashion top rather than a traditional corset. 
So that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, we're going to verge off the pattern a little bit, but I'll talk you through what I'm doing and where I'm changing things. I also managed to pick up some eyelets and eyelet pliers um, yesterday, which I've never used before. Don't know what I'm doing, um, but they will be for the ribboning and tying up at the back. Okay, so we have now got the lining all attached here, exactly the same as what I did with the front yesterday. And then I have just ironed all the seams so the fabric sits nice and flat at them. So next we are going to do the boning. So the boning gets attached to every seam um, in the corset and it gets attached to the lining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the boning lengths but I'm going to allow for the fact that I'm not going to be, what do you call it, uh, I'm going to be binding the edges, um, so because we're going to have a seam I'm going to cut the boning a little bit shorter to the actual full length of the seam to allow for that seam allowance in there. Also on the pattern it says to cut the boning with a little curve just so it doesn't jab into you or jab through the fabric, um, so I'm going to do that as well and then we'll have a look at attaching it. I've cut the pieces for each seam. I haven't attached them all yet, but I've attached the first one um, just with pins ready to sew. Um, I've made sure that it's shorter than the fabric so that I've got a seam allowance. I've rounded the edges as I've cut it. Um, so that's what we're looking like there. I'm going to change my sewing machine foot to my piping foot, which if you've not seen one before it looks like that and basically you can clip on either side and it allows this bit allows you to get in a lot closer to um, the side of something so they're used for piping zips I'm going to use it for the boning so I can get in close to the side of where the boning bit is either side of the casing so the boning is now in it wasn't too bad to do um, that it's not the neatest stitching. I've got a few places where I've lost it and gone back over it or I've wobbled onto the boning a little bit more. Um, but to me that doesn't matter because it's on the inside of the garment and I don't really mind the imperfections. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to do right sides together with the outside of the bodice um, and pin it and stitch it round. I'm going to have to leave quite a big turnout gap um, because the boning's got to go through it. I think it'll be absolutely fine just as long as it's a big enough gap to get through because it's quite flexible boning. I don't think I have any issues. So that's what we're going to do next and then we can sort of put it on as best as we can and make sure that it fits okay. Um, I probably should have checked for fit before putting the boning on. Um, because at that point you can adjust the seams. I'm not too worried about it because it's a corset. As long as it's not too big, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, but if you're unsure about your size originally or the sizes doesn't match up exactly to what you are measuring, then check your like measurements and seams before you put the boning on um, and then you can adjust it properly. Right, we are looking quite good now. So we've got the corset constructed and the lining added there. All of the boning pieces match up with the seams on the front, which I'm very happy about. But also, um, if you're wondering about the straps, I've just got them safety pinned right now. So I could go and try it on. So I've tried it on and the, the front fits really nicely. The side seams are where they want to be. Um, but because I'm quite small around my middle and my back and then bigger on top so the back currently is too big so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back the wrong way out again and I'm basically going to half both of these end panels I've had Chris have a look at it for me and that's how much he thinks wants taking off so I'm going to cut those down I also found that the sleeves were quite long um, so I'm going to cut down these a little bit as well um, so then they're a bit shorter and I've got a bit more adjustment. I have now altered it so it should fit. I've tried it on again it looks like it's gonna fit. Sorry if there's background noise there's all sorts of noisy things going on outside. 
Um, and now I'm going to come to doing the eyelets. So I've not done eyelets before. I've just Googled it and I think I know what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on in nice, even um, steps of where I want the eyelets to be. So I'm going to mark those on with pen. Um, if you're worried about putting pen on your fabric, then mark it on with thread. Um, I'm going to mark those on and then I'll come back to you with the next step. I have marked on where I'm going to put the eyelets. It's worked out as quite a lot, but I um, measured how long the back was and then worked out what it would divide by nicely. So I went with three centimetre gaps because it was about 27 centimetres long, which meant we've got eight um, eyelets placed on each side. So next, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to open my pack of eyelets, see how big the holes need to be, and then I'm going to cut a little cross where the eyelet is going so that I can push one part of it through. So I've come down to show you where we're at. Um, it's difficult to show you because I've got really high-waisted um, shorts on and it does go a little bit lower than what I was initially planning but I really like it where it sits. Um, and obviously I've still got the straps to do. But, see what you can see. We've got it all laced up now. It fits really well. It's got a really good amount of support. Um, especially once the straps are on. I think, yes, it will support enough without a bra. Um, sorry, I keep swizzling and swiveling the camera as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's how it's fitting. I've obviously got... Under this arm, I've got some hand sewing to do, so that currently looks horrendous, but it won't after I've got that done. I've got the eyelets to put on the straps, and then I can get those supporting... Um, and fitted there and then we're about done i have to say so we're getting there hello guys so i am back it is now monday and i wanted to show you the finished corset so also sorry if i look a bit flushed in this clip it is the hottest day on record in the uk it's like 35 degrees and i've just put a corset and jeans on probably not the best shout and it is very warm um but yeah, I wanted to show you the finished corset. I've styled it up how I probably would wear it. It's very much a sort of um, night out, dinner out, drinks sort of a top. It's not the comfiest. It's probably very much something where it's like, if you like the style, you bear with it and ignore the comfort factor because it's not the comfiest thing. You can tell why um, companies are doing the corset style without the boning in. Um, but that would mean that I would have to wear a brow with it and it wouldn't give the effect. So very, very happy with it. Very, very happy with the fit. I'll show you the back so you can see the lace up details. That's all fitting really, really well. So a couple of points that I wanted to make. Point number one, um, the pattern did say to add an interfacing layer in between the fabric and the lining. Um, I didn't do this because I didn't think it would need it and I would confirm that it doesn't need it. I'd say for a corset top you'd be too warm and too restricted to wear it um, for any period of time if you had interfacing in here as well. So I was pleased with that decision. Um, I did decide halfway through not to go as cropped as I was going to go and however much I like it on this one I'd say with the style of trousers that I have cropped would probably be a lot more wearable. Um, with the high-waisted jeans etc although I do really like it with this pair of jeans with this bit just coming over and also it's very very flattering because it sort of hides the belly a little bit there which is always nice um, but I would potentially make another cropped one in the future the other thing I was going to say is I did take my measurements and cut out the pattern to exactly the size that it was suggesting for my measurements 
however it was still huge so I took off well because I didn't bind the edges I was already taking off a seam allowance round the back which would have been the equivalent of three centimeters um, and then I took off another probably at least that if not a bit more um, and it's still I could have gone smaller if I'd have wanted a gap between my um, between the backs joining up then I could have gone smaller and got away with it and have like the ribbon detail standing out more because it was showing on my back rather than on the fabric um, so I would say you can size down or just be aware that you need to fit it a little bit more than I did throughout the process it's a difficult one to fit because until you've got the eyelets in and you can lace it up you don't really know how it's going to fit on your body and by the time you've got the eyelets in it's a bit too late to then cut a load of fabric out so but I would make sure that you try it on also I'm going to say that it's one to make when you've got somebody else in the house to help you fit it and it's one to wear when you've got somebody else to do it up and take it off for you I have managed to do it up by myself tonight um, because Chris is still at work but I'd say very much it is a lot easier with somebody else to do it for you. But yeah, overall very, very happy. The fabric's worked well. It's not see-through. It's given me the support I want. Um, so yeah, successful make. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.